My name is Shayla Cowan, and I'm Chief of Staff of Woolpacker Productions and Woolpacker Media. I've been working in film and television for 15 years. I always knew that I wanted to be successful. I just did not know I would land here. I think oftentimes people are so worried about doing it right. Just do it. You're gonna make a movie. It's going to be awful. Like, that's just the reality. But as you keep going, it's going to get better. But it starts with you. No one can make you great. I am from West Bloomfield, Michigan. I grew up uh, with my mom and it was a Jewish community. So you can only imagine, there was about 5% black kids, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was the best place to grow up. I was in first grade and my first concert was Michael Jackson, Bad Tour. And seeing him on stage at the Palace of Auburn Hills was insane. Seeing this man literally moonwalk and have all these people screaming, that's what made me really take dance seriously. And that is when it all clicked for me. I danced up until I was about 21. I auditioned for the Detroit Shock, which was a high school team that would perform at the WNBA games. I made the team and it was incredible. And then coming out of college, I danced for the Detroit Pistons, which was really exciting. And that is where I really got to see like the lay of the land of what entertainment could be. I also was interning at a radio station in the summer. So I was always surrounded around entertainment. I just never knew that this was my purpose where I am now. So I moved to Atlanta, didn't know a soul. Oddly enough, ended up on a set called Stomp the Yard which was a movie that was a blockbuster for Will Packer. The short version is I ended up helping extras casting, super random, can't make this up. In the midst of working, I met Neo's managers as well as Neo, and lo and behold, I asked them if I could intern for them. And they were like, well, you don't know anything about music. And I'm like, well, it's more about assisting than anything. Well, you don't know how to assist. It can't be that hard. And so I would just show up until the opportunity came and there was a position available to be one of Neil's manager's assistants. And I worked my tail off, I learned so much. And I think that was really the foundation of, you know, what was to come. So it'd been about four years and I just was at a place where it just wasn't serving me anymore. I've always been a person of purpose and have to enjoy what I was doing and it just wasn't serving me. And so I quit. With the resources and relationships I had, I started a concierge service called Always There Concierge. And it became something that was really moving the needle. And then there was an economic crash. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do next. I went to an event, a DJ Hero event with an actor friend who was in town. And we literally bump into Will and his partner, Rob, at the time. And Will was like, hey, you know, what's up? How you been? What are you doing these days? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm just chilling because I had only been out of work maybe a week. He was like, well, you know, we are looking for an assistant. I need an assistant. My assistant is going to do something with a director. You know, would you be interested? And I was like, Maybe, so he gave me a phone number to call. I called the young lady and I set up, you know, my interview. It turned into a two hour conversation. It didn't even feel like an interview. I hadn't even like gotten halfway home where I had gotten a call saying that he wanted me um, to work on this movie. And it was actually the sequel to Stomp the Yard, which is also kind of ironic as well. I had no idea what the film industry was or what it looked like or had been on a movie set. And I just, I pushed through. I pushed through so hard. And three weeks before we wrapped, he came to me and said, hey, I would love for you to be my executive assistant. I said, let me come back to you because I knew I wasn't a desk assistant because I wasn't when I worked in music. I went back to him and I said, listen, I'm interested. But when you go make movies, I wanna go with you. And I don't know where I had that fearlessness to ask that question. I don't know where that came from. And he came back and said, let's go. And my first theatrical film with him as his executive assistant was Think Like a Man. That movie cost around 13 million to make and it grossed 97 million. I had no idea what that meant. 
after Will broke down, you know, the makings of a movie and the budget of, you know, the return of investment, I was like, oh, I like this. And I caught the bug. And everywhere we went, people were like, I can't believe you guys made that movie for, you know, that little bit of money. And I'm like, that's not little bit of money. To me, well, it was like the most money I had ever like, said out of my mouth like you can't even you can't even take that I don't even know what you could say to that to someone who's in their late 20s thrown into a position but knew that there was purpose behind it it's like I don't know it's hard to articulate to be honest with you but it's one of the special ones and when people ask me what's my favorite movie oftentimes I say think like a man really because it was the start of so many big careers and everyone's still very close to this day. We still have an email thread um, and check on each other regularly. So I was his executive assistant for quite a few movies. We was a two-man band and we would, you know, make sure it happened. We would wrap one movie and, you know, start prepping on the next one. We had shot right along. It went really well. Universal was interested in doing a deal with him, which meant relocation to LA, overhead, the whole thing. Will Packer Productions was now a thing. I think Almost Christmas was my first credited associate producer. And it was so special because it was something that both Will and Universal strongly supported because I was on every set and very involved. So it was like, she's already doing the work. And it was really, really special. And the, you know, when Will came to me and he was like, you know, we, I want to give this to you and Universal supports it. That just really goes to show who he was as a person. And it was like, you want to uplift this black woman who isn't asking for any of this, just really enjoys the behind the scenes and just uplifting him and making sure he had everything he need because when he had everything he needed, he could also continue to rise to the occasion, which was really special. And um, that was my first one, was all, almost Christmas. And then it just continued. And then Girls Trip was like the one. A fun story how it came about. Will and I were headed to New Orleans and we were flying out of Atlanta and we got on the plane and it was just like nothing but everyone going to Essence. I mean, people were singing and dancing. First class looked like uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like everybody was like, it was a big deal. And he looked around and he was like, I wonder if this could be a movie with women behaving badly. And I was like, what? And he was like, let's look at the festival this year a little different. And we did, and we pointed out things. And you know, later he had a conversation with the amazing Donna Langley at Universal. And she was like, let's do it. And we all looked at each other and was like, oh, it's over. And then it came out, I think in July, and it just, it killed. We had started Woolpacker Media. So our TV side had moved over to media. We had acquired Exo Nicole. We had acquired WP Narrative, and we were rocking and rolling. And it was funny because it came a point, like after Girls Trip, people didn't know what my title was. So they didn't know whether to say I was his assistant. So you would see people really like fumble on, ah, oh, this is Shayla, she, you know? And so he came to me and was like, you need a title because it's Hollywood. And Hollywood only responds to titles and you are way more than assistant even when you were an assistant. So we've got to figure this out. And I had written out like maybe five or six um, titles, right? That I felt I could one, be great at, cause that's important. And two, that I thought would also be something that would give me a challenge. I put them in a wall and I promise myself, whichever one I pull out first is the one. There's no take backs, even though I was the only one in the office, this is the one. And literally I pulled it out and it was chief of staff. I texted him and I was like, chief of staff. And then he hit me the next morning and was like, let's do it. We're doing an announcement. I'm like, we're not doing an announcement. I don't need an announcement. And we did an announcement. The feeling of the support from people who I didn't even know knew who I was, was like overwhelming. And it just showed that people had actually been watching my journey. And I realized, all right, now I have a duty to just make sure that I continue to uplift, but also make change, be a different kind of chief of staff, be the chief of staff that, you know, 
is cool and fly, but also gets the job done. And I think I was able to accomplish that. To say that you producing the Oscars alongside Will, I play background. I'm behind the scenes. I can count how many red carpet photos I had prior to, you know, producing the Oscars. That's not my thing. I like to walk the streets. I don't like people walking up to me going, hey. And I just, all that just came so forward so fast and I panicked. So when he told me that they had been circulating, I said, oh, that's great. Like, it's time for us to get uncomfortable. You need this. This would be so good. This is just another thing that shows that we're not just in one box, right? I said, you know what? I'm gonna put together a list of female black producers because that is gonna be the one. I, I, this, this is gonna be good. And so I sent it over and I said, what did you think about my list? And he goes, yeah, no. He said, I actually would like to produce this with you. And when I tell you, it had sounded like he had, was speaking a foreign language. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, he's like, I can't do this. I can't think of doing this with anyone, but you, Shayla, let's go. And I was like, oh, I gotta think about this. The main thing that I woke up to on my mind was, you can't be a hypocrite. You can't tell someone to go do this and then you won't jump in the fire, you know, with them. And I called him, I was like, let's do it. I said, but I have one rule. My only request and rule is that we have fun doing it because I know it's gonna be so much work. I don't even know what I'm walking into, but let's just have fun. And he said, deal. We were thinking of host. You know, you have to think of everything, all the way down to the title card, the color, the look, like which trailers we're gonna use for these movies, what clips we're gonna use. And so some of the things that like I really wanted change in was the trophy presenters. And I was like, we need an HBCU component. We thought about bringing in a marching band, but that would have been a whole lot. So I said, why don't we get like a king and queen of an HBCU and let them be trophy presenters? And Pac was like, that's a great idea. So we picked a school that one of his sons is currently attending, North Carolina a &T. We had two really talented kids. We also, was also important to me was like theater teachers. A lot of these actors don't, their only reason why they're on these stages accepting these awards and being nominated is because it started in high school or it started in college. So we had a theater professor from UCLA and we had one from USC. And that was like the best thing ever. And they were so excited and they couldn't believe it. And it was such a great story to be told. We had presenters that would have never had the opportunity to present on stage. And we went back to like, the nostalgia of some of our favorite movies. I think White Men Can't Jump was one of my favorite moments because the three of them hadn't been in a room together in a long time. Everybody was crying. I was crying because they were so excited to see one another. And it was like, those little touch points just really meant the world. I mean, having Megan the Stallion be a part of Encanto, like, come on now. We had Adam Blackstone, who is just like insane as our music director. The food, Ghetto Gastro, and Wolfgang Puck at the Governor's Ball. Beyonce was nominated. How do you get B? Thank God for relationships and resources over the years. You know, she said yes. That was really special, but I'm so thankful and happy that I actually just got uncomfortable because I learned so much. And I also, it was a time where I was able to exercise my power. There's a level of power that you have when you rise to the occasion in this industry, but you have to know when to use it. And I was so appreciative to myself that I had did it the right way and I had worked my tail off. Nothing was handed to me. I've never had to ask for a raise. I've never had to ask for anything. And to be able to partner with him on something like that and embark on that, man, I just, even like to this day, I still be like, what? Like somebody just recently, introduced me as an Emmy nominated. And I was like, for what? I actually had forgotten, not being funny, but like, I don't, I don't hold on to it. The grace is amazing, but also the understanding that um, I have really been able to make history a couple of times. It's overwhelming, but it's pretty amazing. I want to continue to make sure that those who are in these rooms that look like me, who are not 
in C-suite positions, know that it's possible. Anytime I walk into a room for a meeting and you know the assistants may be sitting along the wall, I always go over and I say hello because you never know who's gonna end up running this town. And for me, it's the same thing. People would push me aside as an assistant and now, you know, <laughs> they be calling.